What if the great dying never happened? To most people, the great dying sounds like a bad early 2000s apocalypse film starring Nicolas Cage, but actually, the great dying was a massive mass extinction that happened 220 million years ago. The reason the great dying still matters 220 million years later is that it wiped out 95% of life. To visualize that, imagine if there's a room with 100 people. After the great dying, only 5 would be left. Imagine all the ecosystems that were wiped out, and all the areas that were created for new niches to grow after this time. To see what would have happened if the Great Dying never happened, we need to first look at how the Great Dying happened, and what were the after effects. The original reason for the Great Dying is the Siberian Death Traps. The Siberian Death Traps were a series of volcanoes that were located in Siberia during this time period, and they all exploded in a single volcano. For those of you who have seen my Yellowstone video, you know how powerful a single supervolcano would be. Now imagine Yellowstone to the hundredth power. That's similar to how powerful the Siberian Death Traps were. An immediate and probably one of the least important of the side effects of this was it created a greenhouse effect. All the stuff that was released by the volcano blocked out the sun and made the earth much more stuffier and warmer and brutally changed the environment, making it hard for animals to survive. After this, there was so much gunk in the wind and air that acid rain began to fall across the world. And this stripped entire forests and vegetated areas of their plant matter, and thus many animal species starved because of this. Without any plants, the herbivores died, and without any herbivores, the carnivores died, and without any carnivores, the scavengers died. And it was an endless circle of death and sadness. Without the plants to hold the dirt into the ground, the dirt became silt and flowed down the rivers and destroyed the marine ecosystems, which were already devastated by the acid rain and the rise in temperature, which destroyed sea currents. Also, the gases messed up the oxygen to the level at which animals, often at higher latitudes, or animals with bad breathing systems, often died from lack of oxygen. In the 5% that survived, there were three very important species. The first is Proterosuchus. Proterosuchus lived in a niche similar to the niche that crocodiles occupy in our time, and it is the ancestor to crocodiles, dinosaurs, and birds. So if it never made it out, those species never would have been created. Also, there is Dicynodon. It, it had a niche similar to the niche that gophers fill in our time, and it is the ancestor to mammals. Also, there's the Lystrosaurus. In the pre-Great Dying world, the Lystrosaurus had a niche similar to that of the modern-day sheep, and its descendants have died out, but they've been so plentiful that at one point they were fairly important. The big group that was hurt by the Great Dying were the mammal-like reptiles. Most people have never heard of the mammal-like reptiles, but they were, to put it shockingly, a combination of mammals and reptiles. They might have had milk, they might have given live birth, we don't know. But we find that they walked the road between mammals and reptiles. The mammal-like reptiles, without the great dying, probably would have remained Earth's dominant species for much longer. We find that over time, in the Permian, from the beginning of the Permian to the end of the Permian, the mammal-like reptiles were evolving to be less and less reptilian and more and more like mammals. So without the Great Dying, we can assume this process would have continued, and the mammal-like reptiles probably evolving to be more and more like mammals. The Great Dying created a void in which dinosaurs grew into, and so without the Great Dying, we can assume that dinosaurs never would have become the major life form on Earth. Without dinosaurs and raptors existing, birds likely never would have evolved because birds evolved out of the dinosaurs. For at least some time, without 
birds being the main avian group, dragonflies probably would have remained the large avian group. And in the pre-bird world, there were actually dragonflies the size of hawks that swarmed across the sky. I've got an even more hypothetical idea. Perhaps spiders would have evolved to become the main avian predator. There are spiders in the Amazon that can fly. And spiders jump from tree branch to tree branch, meaning it wouldn't be too hard for them to evolve flight. And they're quite light, and they're fast predators, so it's basically designed for them. But of course this is quite hypothetical, and the chances of this probably aren't very high. Mammals actually still would have evolved in this timeline, but whether they'd be dominant is still in question. In our timeline, mammals evolved underground as shrew-like creatures, while the dinosaurs were still dominant. But with the mammal-like reptiles still dominant, there's no reason to assume why mammals still would not have evolved the way they did in our timeline. The trilobites likely never would have gone extinct without the oceanic disaster, and they probably would have survived to this very day, because... Trilobites survived all the previous extinctions, and it took the most powerful extinction ever to wipe them out. So, they would have likely survived to this very day. In our timeline, in the mid-Triassic, there was a mass extinction that wiped out the mammal-like reptiles and solidified the control of the dinosaurs. But, in this timeline, I don't know what would have happened. Because in our timeline, the mammal-like reptiles were already a weak species when they were finally wiped out by the Triassic extinction. But if the mammal-like reptiles were strong, they might have survived. On the other hand, mass extinctions kill a lot of things, and the mammal-like reptiles might have been destroyed by them anyhow. So this timeline will briefly fork in two to see what would happen if either timeline happened. In the first of these timelines, the mammal-like reptiles are wiped out in the Triassic mass e extinction. This timeline would be similar to our timeline. With the collapse of the mammal-like reptiles, the dinosaurs still would have taken over. And after the collapse of the dinosaurs, the mammals still would have taken over. But it would be different in hundreds of subtle ways. There would have been species that would have survived without the Permian mass extinction, and would have made it over the Triassic mass extinction, because the Triassic mass extinction wasn't as bad as the Permian mass extinction. So there would have been many species that in our timeline were wiped out by the Permian mass extinction, but instead survived over the Triassic mass extinction and had descendants. Of course, I can't really tell you what these species were, because I honestly don't know, but they likely would have changed history in many subtle ways, and likely would have had a very different outcome from our timeline. Now we're going to move on to the second possible timeline, in which the mammal-like reptiles survived the Triassic mass extinction. Because they were wiped out 180 million years ago, I can't tell you much about a world run by mammal-like reptiles, but they probably would have evolved to be more and more mammalian slowly. In this timeline, true mammals probably would have remained underground as they were in the reign of the dinosaurs and would have lived in a niche similar to that the shrew lives today. The ancestors of the dinosaurs at the time of the Great Dying were crocodile-like creatures, and after the Great Dying, they went both into the land and to the sea, but with the mammal-like reptiles controlling the land, they would have slowly gone into the sea and would have become marine predators like the mosasaurs of our timeline. Could mankind have evolved? Surprisingly, it's actually fairly possible. With the mammal-like reptiles evolving to be more and more mammalian, probably something similar to a monkey likely would have evolved at one point. And with hundreds of millions of years of possibilities, it's actually fairly possible that these ape-like creatures would be forced to live onto the plains and evolve human-like characteristics. And we're getting really hypothetical now, but perhaps these ape-like creatures might have evolved something similar to human civilization. Now imagine how advanced they'd be with the 150 million year head start. They'd likely be so advanced we wouldn't even realize how advanced they'd be. We probably can't even imagine how advanced we'll be a thousand years from now. Now imagine how advanced they could be with 150 million years. 
Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this immensely hypothetical alternate history, subscribe or comment. What if I'll test? Thank you for watching.